Scientists warn there's a dangerous side to the hypnotic glow of the aurora borealis or northern lights, especially if this colorful display shows up in more southerly locations. It was just so bright that you could read newspapers at night by the, the, the glow of the aurora borealis. That happened in 1859, according to Dr. Peter Pry. The so-called northern lights could be seen from the equator, a sign of an extraordinarily powerful solar or geomagnetic storm. Scientists named it the Carrington Event, after Richard Carrington, a British amateur astronomer who observed a white light flare on the sun. A big solar flare today is known as a coronal mass ejection, or CME. There's more energy concentrated in this one spot than there is someplace else, and it's enough to breach the gravity field. Large flares have escaped the gravity field of the sun several times this year already, including the strong solar storm that drew so much attention in early March. The solar wind carries the large violent ejection of charged particles toward the Earth at speeds of more than 4 million miles per hour. The resulting collision with the Earth's magnetic field produces a geomagnetic storm. In 1859, the solar superstorm disrupted the world's telegraph system, even causing fires at some telegraph stations. In today's technology-driven world, an extreme radiation blast like that could disrupt spacecraft, satellites, GPS, airplane flights, and power grids. When you're dealing with currents large enough to create problems even for a simple telegraph network, that raises concerns for modern equipment. And in this case, it's really the transformers, these big, very difficult to replace transformers that are the concern. If an 1859 Carrington event happened today, you know, it would uh, collapse electric grids, not just in the United States, but across the entire planet. Doctors Pry and Schnur say that would mean catastrophic consequences. Without the electric grid, well, of course, there's no power. There's also no water. There's also no communications, no transportation, no medical care. The financial system would be down. The environmental effects would be catastrophic at a level that we've never seen before. So what is the solution? How do we protect ourselves from a catastrophe in the event another solar superstorm would strike the Earth like the one in 1859 did? Should we build more hardware on the ground to block the impact, or should there be greater forecasting techniques? The answer depends on who you ask. Right now, uh, here in the space of the laboratory... Dr. Antti Polkinen is a solar scientist at the NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. Scientists here develop state-of-the-art space weather forecasting techniques, so we know when a solar Katrina is heading our way. We have seen uh, quite, uh, quite an increase in, in, in terms of solar activity over the past couple of years, exactly because of this approaching solar maximum. Roughly every 11 years, the sun enters this solar maximum phase. Scientists believe the next one will begin at the end of this year and last through 2013. I think it's without a question that we are becoming more and more vulnerable uh, to space weather. So uh, this increasing understanding and the capability uh, to forecast space weather is, is very timely right now. Other scientists say while cutting-edge research and forecasting are important, steps can be taken right now to fortify the electric grid. There are series, something called series capacitance, which can be built into the grid. This, in fact, was done in Quebec. In 1989, a severe solar storm took only 90 seconds to wipe out power across the entire Quebec province. It took up to two weeks to turn all the lights back on. Power industry leaders then took steps to protect the grid from dangerous electromagnetic pulses. Schnur says a more modern version of that protection could be built into grids today at a reasonable cost. One example, new prototypes of so-called current blockers. Pry agrees. There are other, other things called surge arresters that can stop it. You can do things like build Faraday cages around transformers. A Faraday cage is just basically a metal box, and it prevents... Uh, you know, the, the pulse gets short-circuited. Scientists like Pry and Schnur believe the research shows that solar superstorms could be apocalyptic. However, the North American Electric Reliability Corporation, or NERC, disagrees. It recently found that the most likely result from a severe solar storm would be the loss of reactive power. That might then lead to voltage instability, not the failure of a large number of transformers. Scientists believe restoring power after a voltage collapse would only take hours or days, while replacing transformers could leave people in the dark for months, even years. 
Pry calls the NERC report junk science and says it puts the lives of millions in danger. Mark Lobby of NERC stands by the report. The results from the report are very open. Uh, anybody can get the open source code. They can look at the results in the report and uh, they can give us their views. Scientists and engineers disagree on the magnitude of the impact of solar superstorms. Those that believe the consequences can be catastrophic hope protective measures are put in place before it's too late. Mark Martin, CBN News, Washington, D.C. and Greenbelt, Maryland.